Hi everyone and welcome to a series of videos for people interested in getting hands-on with Data Cloud. My name is Dave Norris and I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In this video, we're going to create a website connector, the data streams and the data mappings needed to meet the goals of a fictitious hotel chain called Coral Cloud Resorts. If you're interested in learning more about what those goals were, then check out the previous video linked above. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is discuss data sources. What do we need to support our use case? Well, clearly we have a website and people will be logging in. So there'll be website users and they'll be clicking and viewing things. So that's our engagement. And what we're looking to track is what featured experiences in terms of spa days and hiking tours are they clicking on to support our use case? And that comes from the products table in Service Cloud. So how do we get this information into Data Cloud? Well, Data Cloud has a website connector that will allow us to ingest the website data we need. Website users come across as an identity data lake object, and the engagement comes across as a behavioral data lake object. And then we're also going to ingest those products from Service Cloud so that we can map them to the engagement. Now we need to make sure that this ingested data is mapped to a consistent schema. In Data Cloud, that's called the Customer 360 Data Model. So let's take a look at a key resource that's going to help us identify the best standard objects to use and perhaps discuss if we need to create custom objects. This is the Data Cloud Overview resource. It lists some of the standard objects that I can map into, but not all of them. I've included a link above if you need more information. Now, data mapping in Data Cloud is synonymous with loading data into Salesforce, if you've ever done that before. You may have a source of information, typically a spreadsheet. The first thing you would ask yourself is, is there a standard object that I can map into? Or do I need to augment a standard object with additional fields? If there isn't, maybe I need to create a brand new custom object. The process is similar in Data Cloud. The only difference is we don't have spreadsheets, we have data lake objects, and the underlying data models are different. So for Data Cloud, for website users, we can map into a standard data model object called individual and related contact points. We'll be using contact point email. That's the only bit of information we'll be capturing. For engagement data, there are engagement data model objects. We're mapping featured experiences as products. So the product browse engagement data model object would be a good fit. And finally, to map product codes to actual underlying products, we can also map into the product data model object. So to see how this affects our data model, let's take those specific objects and apply it to our data model. So with our newfound appreciation for the Customer 360 data model, you can now see why we map identity to an individual and contact point email. We're mapping behavioral information in terms of what they're clicking on to product browse engagement. And I've also added on here privacy consent log for when a website user consents or opts in for us to be able to track their activity on the website. And finally, we're mapping product information, so the experiences at each resort into the product data model object. Now I've kept the data mappings in these videos really simple on purpose, so they're easier to follow. But if your privacy consent structures or engagement structures are more complex, feel free to use different standard or create your own custom objects. Okay, so, Enough chat, let's get into the tooling and see how we set up the website connector. Under Data Cloud Setup, we'll head to Website and Mobile Apps. Here is a website connection I've already set up called Coral Cloud Website. All I needed to do was specify the schema we want to use. So Salesforce provides a sample structure and I've included a link for you to use to download it above. The schema gets you up and running with events for things like identity, consent, interacting with shopping carts, placing an order, and even browsing your product catalog. But you can add custom events too. Once we've uploaded our schema, we can then create a data stream that uses these schema objects which relate to events. So let's go back to the data model to ground us with where we are in the setup before we create the data stream. So back in Coral Cloud's data model, we're going to use the website connection we've just set up to ingest the identity 
and behavioral data we need using data lake objects. Then we'll use the identity data lake object and map it to the standard customer 360 data model, mapping into the individual and contact point email data model objects. So let's do that first. In data cloud, we'll head to data streams. We'll click new. Then we'll select website. Click next. Now we can select the events that we specified in the schema. Now we're not interested in capturing all events for our use case. So we're going to select catalog, consent, and identity. We'll hit next. We'll keep all of the default settings, but you can see we're capturing catalog, consent, and identity. Click next and then deploy. This takes a few seconds, but what we'll end up with at the end of this process are two data streams, one related to identity and one related to behavioral interactions, which will include consent. Now we can take the identity data stream, which will have created some data lake objects. Here we have the identity data lake object and the behavioral data lake object. Now we're ready to open up identity and start mapping it to the standard customer 360 data model. Now the easiest way to know where the source of information goes in the Salesforce customer 360 data model in terms of mapping is to use the documentation. Here is a link to the data cloud integration guide where you can find the web SDK connector mappings. What I need to do is look at my source data, which will be on the left here. And it tells me which data model object to map into and which field to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use this profile data mapping section to map individual and contact point email. Now, since this can take a little bit of time, I won't bore you by mapping the individual fields to each other from source to destination, but I will quickly open up select objects just so you can see that we're adding the two standard data model objects that we've talked about. It does take a little bit of time, so be patient. Here we can add contact point email. And then we'll add the individual data model object. Now we're ready to map from the left hand side to the right hand side following the documentation. So let's fast forward whilst I do that. Okay, so the data mapping's done. I've just taken the documentation and mapped the event on the left to contact point email and individual on the right. They're the only two objects I need for our use case. Now it is important to mention device ID at this point. Device ID is that unique identifier. It's going to be created automatically by the web SDK and it's used to track individual devices or browsers in our case across sessions. So it's essentially a form of browser fingerprinting that creates a persistent identifier for anonymous visitors before they identify themselves. So people browsing the website, they'll be clicking and viewing things. They'll be associated with a device ID. Once they log in, we can pass in name and email and the same device ID. And then suddenly those anonymous browsing events will then be tied under an individual. Okay, so let's move on to the next data lake object we need to map. We're now gonna move on to mapping the Coral Cloud behavioral data lake object into the standard customer 360 data model using product browse engagement and privacy consent log. So again, let's look at the existing data lake object we created from the website connector and complete those mappings. Under data cloud, we'll head back to data lake objects. We'll have a look at the behavioral data and we'll click start under data mapping. Again, the best way to get to know how to map source to destination is with the documentation. So just like the profile data, under the web SDK connector mappings, scroll down to catalog events for product browse engagement, and you can see the source, the destination data model object, and the data model object field. Now, since this can take a little bit of time, I'm not gonna wait until I've mapped all the source and destination fields, but I will select the objects we need. We'll 
we're mapping into the consent log and we're mapping into product browse engagement. So I'm going to fast forward to follow the documentation to complete the mappings and we'll circle back when I'm done. This is what it looks like after the mapping is complete. On the left hand side you can see the behavioral events coming in and Data Cloud conveniently splits them into attributes that apply to all events. Then we have our catalog browse events and finally the consent log events and we've mapped them so that when we start using the SDK we're going to be setting some of these attributes on the left and then when we create a consent record, it'll be mapped to the privacy consent log data model object. When we browse a product or an experience in our use case, it will create a product browse engagement record. The last thing we need to do is bring in product information from Service Cloud. I'll head to data streams. I'll click new, select Salesforce CRM as my source. And then I'm gonna view objects and find the product table in Salesforce. The API name is product2, click next. Then I'll give the data lake object a name. I'll just remove the two suffix and select an object category. So for us, it's nothing to do with people or businesses. It's not engagement related data that's time-based. So I'll select other. Then I'll select next and then deploy it. So we're just asking Salesforce and Data Cloud to extract all of the products and put them into Data Cloud so I can now relate them to people browsing products in the website. Once it gets created, it'll be processing. And then what I'll do in my use case is just click refresh now to start populating this. Now we need to map the products to the standard data model object. So I'll head to the product home data lake object. I'll start the data mapping process. I'll click select objects. I'll search for the product data model object. The mappings are automatically created for me based on the, the name of the source field. So I'll just click save and close. The next thing we need to do is map products to the product browse engagement data model object. So I'll head to the data model tab and search for the product browse engagement data model object. Then I'm going to click the relationship sub tab. And you can see here that there's an existing relationship that maps what products we're browsing to an individual. We're going to edit those relationships. We're going to add a new one. And we're going to say the product that I'm browsing is going to be mapped in a many to one relationship to the product data model object. And in our case, we're actually mapping the product code. Going to make sure it's active and then click save and close. Whilst that relationship's getting created, if we switch back to the data model quickly, what we're doing here is creating this relationship. We're in product browse engagement and we're creating the relationship back to a product. So if I'm using the web SDK and I create a product browse engagement record and I specify a product code, I want to tie that back to the actual product itself. That's going to help me get some insights later on. Let's go back to data cloud and check that the relationship's been created. And that's it for this video. We've made a really good start at being able to address Coral Cloud Resort's main goal of being able to track website engagement. We've set up the website connector. We then looked at the associated data streams and how we map those to the standard customer 360 data model. We now have the foundation in the next video to be able to look at how we use an SDK to start sending events into data cloud. If you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and check out other videos like this on the Salesforce Developer YouTube channel.